Something like this makes an incredible media server where you can stream your movies, TV shows, and music to almost any device you own. It's like owning your own version of Netflix or Spotify. The only difference is you have complete creative control over what content is available to you because you own it. Hey, what's up friends and welcome back to Dreamin Digital. I'm your friend, Mike. If your goal is to put together a low cost PC that you can use as a small Plex server to stream all of your content, then this video is definitely for you. Consider this an easy step-by-step -step guide to help you pick the right hardware for your personal media server based on my own setup. I'll walk you through the key things you need to know before you spend any money. Trust me, I left no stone unturned around every corner of the internet to make sure we all have the best information possible. Before we go any further, I want you to be honest with yourself as you start this project or any project for that matter. If you're aiming for a good media server that can handle a bunch of different tasks, don't be cheap. Spend once, cry once. I say that as someone who's cycled through multiple PCs, media setups, and stereo gear until I finally landed on what I use today. It takes time and a few mistakes to get there, but that's the whole point of these types of videos. Let me make the mistakes so you don't waste your own time or money. My first obstacle with this whole thing was, where do I begin? Should I build a whole new custom PC from scratch? Uh, I literally just wrapped up building my custom creator PC not that long ago, plus I've got another project in the works for a Steam and emulation machine, so budget-wise I was looking to keep it as lean as possible since this is all out of my pocket. This is a brand new channel, so let's just say companies aren't exactly kicking my door down to donate PC parts just yet. I tried mapping out a cheaper micro ATX or ITX build since this thing's going to live in a small shelf and theoretically it doesn't need to be, you know, top of the line, you know, Plex server, but the math just wasn't adding up. Cases alone were already hitting the price range I wanted to spend for the entire project. So I did what most of us do, even creators like me. I hopped on YouTube to learn something new. I found several videos showing how people turn older small form factor machines into media servers, and some even upgraded them into gaming rigs. There seems to be a small form factor renaissance going on at the moment, so the market for those is super hot right now. As a lover of all things design, I was instantly drawn to the vibe of the HP Elite Desk 800 G4. The front bezeled subtle grill adds some visual texture to the design. I was also loving the bottom of the front fascia with its premium looking finish and that clean minimalist IO layout. It's very nice. One thing I really appreciate is discreet branding done right and HP nailed it here. It's small, understated, and fits perfectly with its sleek professional vibe. So after I finished cleaning the drool from off my keyboard, I dug into the specs. The HP Elite Desk 800 G4 series packs an eighth gen Intel Core processor, flexible storage and memory options, and comes in different form factors. These were built for enterprise, so reliability and manageability were the focus at the time these were built. I did fall in love with the small form factor version, which is the middle child between the mini and the tower. After looking for solutions for weeks, I felt so much closer to that golden egg. I ended up snagging one used off eBay for 180 bucks. Sure, I've seen cheaper ones. There are some for 60 bucks, but I didn't want something that looked like it had been dug out of the dumpster. I wanted something clean and nice, so I was willing to pay a little bit more, and I'm so glad I did. What's in the
The unboxing experience was cool. Normally when I receive something from eBay, it usually doesn't look like the sellers made packaging and shipping a priority. This one was good though. The computer came surprisingly clean, like abnormally clean. It seems the seller did his best to make sure this rig was ready to go, as turnkey as it could have been. I'm just glad I didn't get a dusty disaster, especially for the money spent. But that's why I was glad I spent that little extra, because this was a best case scenario with a PC that's seven years old. Aesthetically, it was very nice. However, the one flaw I found was with the front bezel. It had a few scratches that I couldn't unsee, so I found a used one on eBay and went for it. Problem solved, the one I received was in way better shape and it gave me a peace of mind. So let's talk specs for a second. It came with a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive with Windows 11 already loaded on it. Clean install, however, I'll get to that in just a second. The processor is an i7-8700. This is actually a pretty good 8th gen processor. It comes with 6 cores and 12 threads at 3.2 GHz base frequency, and it could be pushed to 4.6 GHz. It does come with quick sync, so hypothetically, it can run a Plex server on its own, without the need of an external GPU. For the memory, it came with two 8GB sticks of DDR4 RAM, which is also more than enough to run things smoothly. Now, if I wasn't neurotic and completely insane, I would safely say that I just spent $180 all in and we are good to go because this thing could work as a Plex machine as is, minus any extra, obviously any extra storage you need for your media. But that wasn't the case. I am completely insane. No, I'm not and wanted to squeeze out as much as I could from this machine. The first thing I did was take everything apart to see what I was working with. Luckily, it's super easy to work on. It's damn near modular. So taking things apart wasn't a problem. I went ahead and refreshed the thermal paste on the processor and heatsink since the processor is the only component in this machine that I'm not swapping out. Well, I'm not swapping out the power supply either, I suppose, even though I could, theoretically, because there are options out there, but the 250 watt power supply that it came with is more than enough to power what I got going on. If you choose to upgrade the PSU, there are a few options that will work. I'll link down below. Okay, so remember when I mentioned the Windows 11 install thing? I don't know this guy. I don't know what's on that drive. Just because the overall presentation was almost too good to be true, doesn't mean I'm going to start blindly trusting strangers on the internet. So I removed the drive and instead installed two one terabyte drives, one to run a fresh install of Windows 11 and one for miscellaneous. Yes, friends, this motherboard has two NVMe slots. I chose a brand new Western Digital Blue for the main drive and the other one is a Sabrent rocket I had just laying around. Another good piece of advice, if you have random stuff laying around collecting dust, this is a good opportunity to put it back to work. I'd rather use something I already have than spend money on new stuff I don't necessarily need. So fresh new NVMEs and a fresh new Windows 11 install, and I got the activation key from VIP URCD key online. I'll drop a link down below, it's legit. I'll also link to everything I mentioned in this video down below as well. So. Now you have a resource for all the parts for your build. <laughs> I replaced the RAM with two sticks of 16 gigabyte Crucial Pro DDR4 3200 RAM for a total of 32 gigs, which is more than enough for this project. And this RAM was specifically recommended for this motherboard. So I felt good about it. I found it brand new on eBay. So that covers processor, memory, and initial storage. Well, I need this machine to hold lots of those TBs since I don't have a separate NAS just yet. I went with a three and a half inch Seagate Exos Enterprise 14 terabyte drive. I found one brand new on eBay for 180 bucks, which is a good deal. I wanted a drive I felt would last long enough until I stumble upon better drives down the road. This motherboard has three SATA ports, so I could add one more three and a half inch drive and a two and a half inch drive below the three and a half inch drive. There's room for it. Uh, I am taking this one day at a time, so one drive is fine for now. 14 terabytes is quite a bit of space. My only concern is backing up all the media I am planning on putting in this thing, so I will probably get like a cheap external to act like a backup for now. Installing the drive was super simple. However, the seller did not include include those proprietary isolation screws to seat the drive securely in the bay. Luckily for me, Amazon had some aftermarket screws ready to go. Oh, and if you're planning on getting a two and a half inch drive for underneath, you'll need a special case for that. Mine didn't come with that. 
as well. So I found one on eBay for like 15 bucks. So all is good there for future storage expansion. There's, it's available. Now, the last thing I wanted to make sure of since I am going to be decoding 4K content is a proper video card. This processor can handle decoding 4K content, but it's an older processor. So my goal here is to take some of the stress off by delegating the heavy lifting to a brand new GPU. This part was a bit painful though, because I literally couldn't decide on a card since there are quite a bit that could do the trick. However, I needed one that could survive off the very conservative amount of power that the PCIe slot is providing since I can't feed the card any external power because of the 250 watt power supply. I literally went back and forth for like two weeks on this. It made me feel like Sheldon Cooper on Big Bang Theory when he was debating between the Xbox or the PlayStation. What should I do? Please pass the buyer! Finally, I found the MSI 3050 low profile with six gigabyte card, got it on Amazon for 180 bucks shipped. A lot more than I wanted to spend, but it's new and minty fresh, so I didn't have to worry about anyone else's abuse or peanut buttery fingers on this thing. Together, altogether, these components created a beast of a machine. This turned out to be a fantastic recipe for this project. Plex is an awesome tool for managing and streaming your content, whether it's music, movies, photos, whatever you got. One feature that made this whole platform popular is the ability to share your media library with your best buddies. However, this is where having a capable machine becomes really important. If 10 of your friends are all milking your content simultaneously, your CPU is going to hate you and a crap graphics card will just fall apart. That's why I didn't skimp on the GPU when setting up my server. Now, personally, I'm not planning to share my library with anyone. That's just how I roll. For me, this setup will run smoothly without the extra strain of others enjoying my content. The goal here is to take all the movies and shows I have ripped or found randomly and innocently on the streets heavy. and make them available to me on any device that supports Plex, which nowadays most of them do. I'm also planning to rip all my CDs and load them onto Plex because I want to take full advantage of Plex Amp. For those who don't know Plex Amp, it's a music player attached to Plex that works similarly to like a, like a room core. It lets you host and stream your Plex music library from anywhere, as long as your server is up and running and you've set up remote access. I will be doing an updated video on how to rip Blu-ray and 4K content using a cheap LG drive. With Plex, you can do a monthly subscription for $4.99, a yearly subscription for $39.99, or a lifetime subscription, and it's only $119.99. I went right in the middle and did a year subscription because I wanna test the waters and see if it aligns well with me and if I enjoy using it, and of course, if I actually use it. Now, you can use Plex for free, but you'll miss out on some cool features like the Plex amp, hardware encoding, and other cool little goodies that for me had enough value to go ahead and jump into the Plex Pass. This whole experience could have gone really well or it could have gone completely just derailed. And I would have probably gotten mad and thrown this thing into the garbage. But I didn't. This machine truly exceeded expectations. I'm absolutely gutted at how fast and smooth it runs. For a seven year old computer, this thing flies. Now, I think I would have been completely barbecued by you guys for not including actual benchmarks to back up my subjective opinion. So I downloaded Passmark Performance Test, which analyzes the CPU, graphics cards, uh, memory and hard disk and just away I went. I was a little nervous because I know this machine isn't new or state of the art, but I did want the score to reflect how I feel overall about the system. So the overall score was 6,632, which lands this PC in the 72nd percentile of PCs tested, which makes me happy. They say a score of 3,000 to 5,000 is considered in the normal to good range and anything above five is in the high performance range. The CPU mark received a 12,582, which lands it at the 48th percentile. I'm actually quite happy with that since it's an older 8th gen CPU. Now, the graphics should have been a bit higher in my opinion since it's a newer card, but that landed in the 53rd percentile. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's not a bad score by any stretch. I just wanted it to shine a bit more. Now, where the system really showed up was with the memory test, a 3,175 securing it a spot in the 73rd percentile and the hard disk a 24,066 coming in in the 79th percentile. 
It's good to remember that this is just a synthetic benchmark test, guys, which gives you an idea of how well the hardware performs a given task. I still wholeheartedly believe the best way to judge a system is real world usage. Use it for what it's intended and then judge the performance from there. I am definitely not mad at the results here. I knew this was a solid recipe when I first fired it up. So I'm glad I went this route and I didn't go try and go any, any older, right? I, I think that this is a win. So now it's time to do some accounting. Wife, if you're watching, this is the time to just turn this shit off. So I spent $180 on the pewter. I spent 180 on the graphics. 180 on the 14 terabyte drive, 40 on the NVMe, 64 on the RAM, 15 on the new front fascia. So that's 659 bucks, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Actually piecing it together, the whole discovery experience, in my opinion, is the most fun, but I'm kind of strange. So that might be just a me thing. This is my first ever Plex server. So I was hoping I'd stumble upon a solid recipe for this build. And I feel like I definitely did. You do have other options though. I could have gotten away with probably half the price and been fine, but I, I wanted to future-proof myself in case I end up really enjoying using Plex. There are also other rigs by Dell and Lenovo that I've seen other creators use, but I thought the Elite Desk looked the coolest. Now, if all of us fails, I don't end up using Plex as much as I thought. I've seen other creators get 60 frames per second on Cyberpunk on an almost identical build. So a casual gaming rig could be another use case. Would I recommend everything I did to you? Yes, absolutely. If you have six or $700 budget, go for it. I have no regrets. Thank you all for joining me today and for sticking around to that dirty end where I ask you to beat the like button within an inch of its life. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel so you can help me grow. I like growing and ring the bell to get notified every time I do something awesome. If you want to really help out the channel, become an epic member of the channel and join the Patreon. I'll leave the links to all the good stuff down below. Until next time, friends, take care.